on the convention, were you simply not convinced that you could keep people safe at the convention? I just felt it was wrong, Steve, to have people going to what turned out to be a hot spot. You know, when we chose it, it was not at all hot. It was free. And all of a sudden, it happened quickly. It happens quickly. And it goes away, and it goes away quickly. Uh, the key is we wanted to go away without a lot of death, without a lot of problems. And we're learning so much about the disease. That's why we're, we're very cognizant of nursing homes. We're watching them very carefully. And people over a certain age, and especially people over a certain age with diabetes or, or heart disease in particular, but with a problem. So uh, we didn't want to take any chances. So we had a lot of people. We have the dele delegates want to be there. We're going to do a fairly reasonably quick meeting in North Carolina. The nomination will be produced. And uh, then we'll announce what we're doing, how we're doing it, whether it's uh, something that's done online, I guess you could call it online. So uh, there can nothing — there could be nothing like our last convention. Unfortunately, that was a great convention and in a great place, as you know. We had a — we had a great time, great time in Cleveland. But um, it's a different world, and it will be for a little while. We want to get the world back to what it was, and I think we'll have that, including great job numbers, uh, including uh, so many things that are happening so positive. I have to say the stock market is close to records for NASDAQ. It, it is a record. It's already exceeded its highest numbers. Uh, but we want to get our country back to what it was. So would your acceptance speech be from the White House, or are you worried that We haven't said that yet, Steve. We'll have that — we'll probably announce that over the next few days. Are you worried this might dampen enthusiasm for you? Look, we've done a great job. We built the greatest economy in the world. No, nobody close. Not China, not anybody. We had to close it. We saved millions of lives, and we opened it. But we had the best numbers in history for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, every group you want to name. Young people without a diploma, young people with a high school diploma, with a college diploma, anything you want to every name. We had the best name. numbers. Young people Women without doing a diploma, young people with a high school diploma, with a college diploma, anything you want to name. We had the best numbers. Women doing incredibly. Never. Never been a time like that. And we had to turn it off because of what China did. We had to turn it off. And then all of a sudden, uh, now we turn it back on and we're doing very well. But it was a very bad China. Speaking about China, the trade deal uh, means less to me now than it did. Record corn day. They purchased more corn than any order ever. And that went on for two or three days and uh, soybeans and all. But. It just means much less to me. Can you understand that? It just means much less to me. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, what was the one thing, if there was one thing, that changed your mind about the convention? And did Florida officials ask you to cancel it? No, they didn't. We're dealing with them, but they didn't. I would just say safety. Just safety. I just, you know, I could see uh, the media saying, oh, this is very unsafe. This is, I don't want to be in that position. It's safety, not because of the media, but that's what they would say. And. Uh, we'll have a very nice something. We'll figure it out. It'll be uh, it'll be online in some form. Maybe it'll be something even a little bit different. We have time. You know, we're talking about the end of August. But uh, I think it'll be something that will be exciting. But there can be nothing like having 25,000 people. We had a tremendous thing planned in — a pl tremendous convention planned in North Carolina. And it would have been very good, but a much smaller version in Florida. But then we saw what was happening pretty quickly. We saw that that the virus was coming up that coast. So, no, I think it's going to uh, come and go. It, it will. I mean, you take a look at some of these locations; we're heavily infected. I mean, to a point where Deborah and I were talking that you know, we, when you look at what happened in New York and what happened in New Jersey and other places, and now you're looking and. It's uh, gone. Hope it stays gone. I think we. I think it will. But we had to be. We had to be. We have to be vigilant. We have to be careful, and we also have to set an example. I think setting the example is very important. Uh, it's hard for us to say we're going to have a lot of people packed in a room, and then other people shouldn't do it. Don't forget, we're talking about schools, and we want them to be vigilant. And we're saying open, and then we're saying here you have a big room. 
But I also, if you notice, I said where bars are crowded, where other things are crowded. Well, there's nothing more crowded than a convention. A convention, I mean, you've seen them. And even though you try and keep people away from each other, it's just not that kind of a thing. They probably can't do that. It just doesn't work for them. So it's a very hard. So I think we're setting an example by doing it. It's very important. Yeah, John. Mr. President, if I could come back to uh, school openings. You talked about money that Congress is looking at to help schools uh, who want to reopen. If a school wants to reopen but is concerned about testing, would you consider directing some of that money toward testing for either a school yeah. district or even individual schools if that's what it took to open the schools? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've, a lot of pe people feel differently about testing. We talk about it a lot. When we have 50 million tests plus, and, you know, we, bra we broke the 50 million test mark, second in the world is India, which has 1.4 billion people, and they had 12 million tests. And other countries that are very big had 2 million tests. And some countries essentially only test if you're sick and walk into a hospital or walk into a doctor's office or you're literally really sick. Uh, they essentially don't do tests unless you're sick. And I understand that, too. So, yeah, if they feel that that's what they want, it's uh, that would be fine. You, you, would, you would tell Congress, you would encourage Congress to pay for testing? For school I, I would if they want. Again, we've done 50 million tests. There's nobody even close in the whole world. You look at our mortality rate, you look at our death rate, you look at different statistics. We're doing very well. But one death is too many. This should never have happened. This should never have been allowed to happen from China. Also, Mitch McConnell's office uh, just put out a statement a moment ago about uh, the Phase 4 relief package, CARES 2, saying, quote, it's tailored precisely for this phase of the crisis. Yet it does not include your payroll tax cut. So do you believe it's perfect? Yeah, I'd like to see a payroll tax cut. I think it's great for the workers. The Democrats would never have gone for it. They don't want it. They're not big into the workers, I guess. And uh, based on that, I told them last night, I told the Republicans who have been working very hard on this, I'll tell you, and they want what's right for the country. And hopefully the Democrats ultimately will. But I said, I think a payroll tax would be good, but you're not going to get it from the Democrats. We need their votes, as you know. It's not like, you know, we have a majority, but it's not enough that we — that's why I guess we have an election coming up. So you still need Democrat votes, and we're not going to get the Democrat votes on that. So I'd like to see it. I think it would be very good for the workers. but. If we're not going to get their votes, I guess we have to go on to the next thing. A payroll tax cut would have been very good. And maybe uh, maybe something happens. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, um, you talk about setting an example on Jacksonville. But I, I just wonder, some people are going to take away from this the lesson that you're pushing too far, too fast. It seemed for a while the numbers were going up in Jacksonville and you were going to have a problem now. This comes up at a time you're pushing for schools to reopen. You have the opening of the Major League Baseball season. Isn't, isn't the example of Jacksonville that we're, we're pushing too fast? Well, baseball, as an example, we were discussing it a little while ago. You're going to be at an a empty stadium. I've agreed. Randy Levine's a great friend of mine from the Yankees. He asked me to throw out the first pitch. And I think I'm doing that on August 15th at Yankee Stadium. And I say, how's the crowd going to be? And, uh, you know, it's like you don't have a crowd. There is no such thing. It's going to be interesting, Mariano. He's not used to that. I've been at many games. He walks in, the place goes crazy. Uh, I think it'd be just as good without the crowd. You were just born with it. You know, some people are born with it. Uh, I don't know. If, this is only for the baseball players, but I've never seen a pitcher throw a ball where so many bats were broken as Mariano. He's got the all-time record. I said, how do you do that? He said, parents. Great parents, when you get right down to it, right? How do you do that? It's called parents. But, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, just to finish, I think, I think that we have to all set examples. I think Major League Baseball is setting an example by, you know, playing to empty stadiums, and so are other sports. You see that. Now, then they'll allow a certain number in. I see golf is now, soon will be allowing people to come in and percentages, and all of a sudden, we want to get back to normal. The key is to get back to normal, because, Nobody wants to see this. But I think it's really good that baseball's opening. It looks like football's opening. It looks like sports are opening. We, we have — it's a tremendous thing psychologically for our country. And uh, we're all — we're all with it. We're, see, we're going to see right now some beautiful, young, little leaguers outside with a great future ahead of them. They're already practicing on the front lawn of the White House. And we're going to go out and say hello to them, and it'll be really great. Okay, how about one more? Yeah, please, go ahead. President Trump, um, 
The Washington Post earlier today reported that one thing holding up the GOP uh, coronavirus bill is the White House asking that it include language regarding the FBI building in downtown Washington, D.C. Is that true? I don't know that they're putting it in this bill, but uh, I know they want to have a new FBI building. This one is very old, and uh, it's really was never built to a very high standard, as you probably have heard. And it's got a lot of danger involved and panels falling off the outside and pieces of concrete falling off the building. And they want to build it at the site that they have it. They had options very far away from Washington. And I said to him, frankly, you have to be near the Justice Department. There's nothing better than the site. The site they have now is better. But they were looking in sites in Maryland and Virginia and different places. But they would have been too far away. So I am I have been encouraging them to build it. And if you're gonna you have a choice, you can renovate the existing building, but it's not a good building, or you could take it down and build a great building for the FBI for a hundred years and have it be incredible, even with tracks on top they're talking about, you know, we have because FBI people like to work out a lot, and you could have literally uh, quarter-mile tracks on top. It's a very big site, very wide site. So I think the idea, the best idea, would be to build a new building, and that way you have it for a long time. Renovation can never be as good as a new building in that case. Uh, I know they're talking about it, whether or not they put it in this bill or someplace else, but the FBI needs a new building, and we'll get it done. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. We apologize for that glitch. It seems to be happening every single time now, but only on the Q&A section. They're messing with the feeds. Okay, they're messing with the feeds. I do not know what's going on. This is already the third time that it glitches when the president starts answering questions and talking to reporters. It does not happen when he's giving updates. It does not happen only up to the point where he starts answering questions. We got to we got to see what that is all about. So thank you so much for your help and your support staying here at Golden State Times. If you guys want to get notified for future live streams when we go live, all you have to do is text the word Trump Live to the number 555-888. Once again, text the word Trump Live to the number 555-888 to get notified for future live streams. YouTube only sends notifications 10% of the time. We send notifications out 100% of the time. So if you want to watch future live streams here at Golden State Times and stay up to date on everything that is going on, text the word Trump Live to the number 555888. 555888. And if you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe and click that notification bell. Thank you so much, folks, and we hope that you guys share this video on social media. You let us know what you guys think in the comment section below, and you click that thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot. Peace.